I'm back. Yes, it's me, Patrick, here once more with another outstanding video lecture about Corey Floyd's interpersonal communication. Outstanding? Well, um, it's it's okay. <laughs> outstanding? Well, I actually didn't know if I would go that far. I try, though, you know? Okay, this is the second of two videos all about Chapter 10, Interpersonal Communication and Close Relationships. The first video is all about friends and romantic partners. Now let's shift gears to families and coworkers. First things first, what makes a family? It's a good question. Uh, the text points out that there are three important characteristics of families. They annoy you, they always ask for money, and they embarrass you. Oh, wait. No, um... <laughs> That's not what it says. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was just going off of personal experience. I'm sure that's never happened to you. Lucky you. Uh, but for serious, the three characteristics are that families have genetic ties, they have legal obligations, and they take on role behaviors. First, families have genetic ties. My favorite kind of tie, followed immediately by a bow tie. I do like a good bow tie. <laughs> but you're not here to listen to me talk about my fashion choices, are you? No, you want to know about these so-called genetic ties. Well, it's sciency. You, you know, I, I, I don't quite understand it, but when you are biologically related to somebody, you have genetic ties to that person, so you're related by blood, as they say. Uh, that's the first potential characteristic of a family member. The second is that family members sometimes have legal obligations to each other. This is particularly true of parents and their children. If you are a parent of a child under the age of 18 in the U.S., you kind of have to, you know, provide them with food and shelter and clothing. And if you don't, well, you could lose your children, and nobody wants that. Another big legal obligation is to your spouse. If you are married to somebody, you have some level of e legal obligation to each other. You might also have a legal obligation to your parents when they become too old to take care of themselves. You may take on the power of attorney for them, for example. So those are our legal obligations. The third characteristic of families is that family members will take on role behaviors for each other. My favorite role is that of a level 53 elf named Petrinius. He's a cleric ranger, and he's got a crossbow with a 25 attack bonus, and... Oh, wait, no. Nope, it's, um, that, 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 not, not those kind of roles. My, my bad. Oh, um, oh yeah, uh, roles. Uh, like the role of uh, oh, a mother, or father, or a brother, or sister. Uh, that is... You need to not just be related by blood or have a legal obligation, but rather you need to act like you're related to each other. So I have two questions for you to consider. First, which of these three characteristics is the most vital when it comes to defining a family? Is it genetics, being related by blood, the most important part of being a family member? Or are the legal obligations the most important part? Or the roles that we play? Think about it. Oh, well, I have an opinion, naturally, <laughs> but I want to hear yours first. The second question I have for you is this. Could it be possible to have somebody you consider to be a family member who is not related by blood or legal obligations? If so, is that family member not as much of a family member? I'm just curious what you think. Uh, the final part of the chapter discusses the relationships we form at work. What? How can you have close relationships at work? <laughs> well, as the book points out, it's possible that sometimes these relationships can turn romantic. And that gets pretty close. Uh, but otherwise, the people we work with are often the people we see most. So even if romantic entanglements didn't happen, we still spend a lot of time with them. And according to the last chapter's attraction theory, proximity is a real thing when it comes to whom we will form some kind of relationship, whether it be romantic or platonic. Uh, the book discusses how we form relationships with our coworkers, but also our bosses and possibly our clients. It's probably important to recognize boundaries, though, particularly with bosses. There is an inherent power differential when it comes to you and a boss. So if you are a boss, you should be aware that any relationship you form will be fought with tension. Ah, more on that in a future chapter. Power is so interesting. <laughs> okay, that's it for this second video of Chapter 10. I hope you had as good a time watching it as I did making it. Or maybe even more. Party up in my office! Woo!